Yeah, it's, it's possible. I don't know if it was a bot or not, but uh, it made me think maybe you could do like a uh, forum bombs where you just pick a, a, a you know a, a newspaper for the day, La Repubblica in Italy or La, Le Monde on France, and you say, okay, this is a ridiculous. Uh, well, I think that's a great article. idea, Andrew. Well, but, but I mean, every day ought to be that. I mean, that's where the fights are going on. Uh, and, and I really appreciate you, Andrew. Thank you so much for the call. Uh, look, the power of people starting a local newsletter. Uh, and, and, and physical paper being delivered to their door, even if you start with your block, the power of starting your own website, the power of doing your own YouTube videos, the power of you becoming a leader, that is what is unstoppable. Uh, thank you. And I'm sure Infowars.com is a focal point, but it, it's about you uh, doing what you did, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Jordan in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Hey. Hey, I couldn't couldn't tell if I was on or not. <laughs> anyway, good to talk to you again. I was going to tell you on July 4th, I went to the Grassy Knoll. I'd never actually been there, interestingly enough. And uh, I took some pictures of the picket fence that I found to be pretty interesting. Uh, people riding on their uh, things like JFK plus 9-11 equals choke hold on the masses and Warren Commission lied. Uh, it was very refreshing, basically, to see that people aren't buying it all anymore. I was wanting to know if uh, you would be interested in me sending those to you or anything like that. Sure. I mean, just post them up on a Twitter account or something yourself. I wouldn't uh, just, like I just like the last guy, send everything to us like we're the headquarters, though that's fine if you'd like to. We get a lot of great you know, information from listeners. But, yeah, I, I think anybody who goes to Dallas should go to the Grassy Knoll and look at where they did the headshot from right there on the knoll versus shooting from the uh, book building way down the street through uh, trees. Uh, that, by the way, lose their leaves in the summer, not in the winter. It, it's impossible. Uh, anything else uh, you'd like to add, Jordan, about your trip to Dealey Plaza? Oh, no, that's it, man. Thank you much for my call. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, send them all along. I'd like to see them. Um, Obama vows to veto spending cuts. He's got a job to do. Bankrupt America even deeper into the offshore bank's hands. Gold soars above $1,600 an ounce. Gas prices on the rise, top $4 in eight states. And they keep blaming the Arabs for that. The main reason is dollar devaluation. It takes more dollars to buy the same oil. But no one dare talk about what QE1, 2, and now 3 is going to do to the dollar. How it's going to annihilate. You know, Obama says, hey, I don't want to, you know, you got to pass the debt increase uh, or you won't get your Social Security checks. Well, they're already shrinking the value of them to begin with. It's like, do you pour out a pitcher of water or do you boil it out? And that's basically what inflation's doing. They're boiling it and pouring it out. Also, speaking of water, radioactivity, and some water supplies. Finally, every week I see new articles in different TV stations. This is Austin's own KXAN. <gasps> There's all this uranium and other radioactive isotopes in the water, and the EPA is concerned about you. And nowhere do they remind you that Rick Perry covered this up, but before him, for at least 15 years, that's 25 years, they knew about it, and that most of it's coming from the sodium fluoride added, which also has radioactive isotopes in it from the mines where they get the phosphates. This is the stuff they can't sell the fertilizer companies, so why not just put it in your water? And then when they get caught covering it up, they have articles about Jeepers Creepers. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to be going over that report as well. Oh, yeah, they put hundreds of horrible things in your water because they're good people. Very good people. Uh, and their answer to you finding out about it is just to raise the levels of what they say is safe radioactively. Just like 20 years ago, they told the troops... Radioactive uh, DU, you cannot use it. It is too deadly. And now they just say, magic wand, no safety required troops. We're going to serve it out to you, even for small arms. How's that sound? And use it in proving grounds right by major cities and towns. Because after all, glowing in the dark's a good thing. You know, they say the Japanese got their spirits brightened uh, by... Uh, Winning the Women's World Cup in soccer. You know, the, the, again, they sell us on, hey, you won a game, but don't worry, you're radioactive now. Let's do this. Let's go back to your calls for our rampage through some more news. Nick in 
California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Can I uh, cut in with the AJs? And, and we can cut out the kudos. Uh, I got a lot of topics uh, sitting through the month with you, um, from Dewhurst to Inside Job. But I uh, first wanted to ask you, since I heard about chemical trails, you might do a show on it. Uh, have you ever heard of enhancing radar? Uh, that they use uh, chemtrails to enhance radar? Yes. I've, in fact, I've actually talked to the uh, director of HARP before, and I've talked to General Benton K. Parton, head of Air Force Weapons Development, and the word is that it's a over-the-horizon radar system uh, is one of the uses of it. I hear they, they can spot out the planes easier also with the, with the metals, like you know, aluminum. So uh, that's hard information to get. So... Um, um, we, we you talk kind of with inside job. Uh, I got some information from Donald Rumsfeld, or actually it goes back uh, a week before they executed Timothy McVeigh. I got a couple some crib notes uh, that uh, they, but the press was just all over Rumsfeld, and they, and um, and they're going, why, why, why so, why, why so hurry? And Rumsfeld finally gave in. He said he's not going to see it, and uh, that's just a week before they executed McVeigh. And another incriminating thing about George W. Bush, ex-president, is um, he, he came out before he departed the White House, and he said, uh, one more target, and they would have won. I mean, they would have won. I mean... Yeah, they the word is people think that, uh, that the flight that went down in Pennsylvania, Flight 93, was going for seven, and that's why they had to blow it up later because it was already rigged. Uh, but the word is uh, that it was really going for the Capitol. It was all going in that same general direction, and if they would have blown up the Capitol with an aircraft, that would have been a real excuse to bring in tyranny. And the Associated Press reported, for no reason, Jeb Bush declared martial law in Florida on September 9th. In fact, folks won't believe that. Uh, just search Governor Jeb Bush declared martial law September 9th, and we'll show folks World Net Daily and Associated Press. You can't make this stuff up. Um, good points, Nick. I appreciate your call. We'll put that on screen for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. For radio listeners, just search Governor Jeb Bush or Florida Governor Jeb Bush declared martial law September 9th uh, of 2001. You heard me right. Two days before 9-11. And George W. Bush, his brother, who had 44,000 U.S. troops, 18,000 British troops surrounding Afghanistan, two carriers that had just arrived, signed the launch order to attack Afghanistan the day before 9-11. Oh, yes. Let's go ahead and talk to Chuck in North Carolina. Chuck, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how you doing? You always sound uh, re-energized when you talk to one of the Pauls. Absolutely. I, look, I, Ron Paul, I mean, I, I work. I'm, I work in the trenches. I work in news. I know how exhausting it is to really think and to really just not go with a script but to really analyze. It is exhausting. I mean, it's just problem solving every minute of the day. And even when I want to wind down, I can't quit thinking about it. And, and Ron Paul works 16 to 18 hours a day. He gets up at 4 a.m. He lifts weights and bikes or jogs on a treadmill for an hour. He eats a Spartan breakfast. And then he reads the news for two hours and legislation and then works all day. And I, I just have done, I know no one is informed as him. I, and I know no one. I mean, I mean, I feel fried at 37. And I don't know how he does it, so that's why you, you saw the profuse worshiping. But I just admire that type of dedication. Absolutely. I got a picture with him uh, after the uh, South Carolina debate at the Tea Party. Uh, he was the only one that come and uh, spoke to us at the Marriott Hotel. And I put my arm around him to get a picture with him, expecting to uh, feel an old man there. And I'll tell you what, I had my arm around his shoulder. He feels some muscle there. The guy, is uh, he's, he's up to the task. What I wanted to ask you about, though, was the um, you know 10th anniversary coming up. Um, I'm kind of hoping to hear maybe that you've got some little documentary uh, that you might be uh, letting out right before the thing, maybe a mini documentary or something. Well, here's you. the problem. Here's the problem. <clears throat> I worked up here until 8 o'clock last night on Sunday, 8 o'clock, and um, got home and put the children to bed and talked, read them a few books, and then worked till 11. So, and I worked all morning yesterday, you know, with my children around me, so I got to at least be in their presence. Uh, but, but here's the deal. I'm making too many, many documentaries. I'm making too many uh, iPhone 4 uploads. I'm doing too many other media interviews. I've got to launch this TV show. I've got to get 
furniture bought for some of the rooms. I've got to get desk in for new employees. I'm not complaining. It's just that I, have, I haven't made a film I made. Burmis, I, I helped him on it. Invisible Empire is excellent. Police State 4, Rob Dew put together uh, with Jason Douglas. Uh, but, but I haven't made a film since Fall of the Republic almost two years ago. So i got to get the TV show launched. And then I can make films, but I just, uh, believe me, there's a hundred films I want to make. I've started and stopped five films the last two years. Just because it's such a process to make a film, I've got to have it exactly right. That's why you watch a fall of the Republic at Endgame. I mean, Endgame says Perry's going to run for president in 2012. How do I do it? Real research. Real time. And, 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 and so, yes, I want to do more. Believe me. But uh, that's why there's other great filmmakers that we promote because there's other people stepping up. This is a group effort, and I love you, and I appreciate your call. Who's up next here? John, who's up next? Michael in New York, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, how are you? It's, uh, it's an absolute honor to speak with you. Um, you, uh, you gave me the red pill about three years, uh, three years ago, and I've been awake and just awakening others ever since. Uh, just two quick things for you, Alex. I'm an Orthodox Christian priest. Uh, serving a, a small Egyptian community up in New York. Uh, I was on Capitol Hill on June 15th meeting with some senators, representatives, and coming out of that meeting, came out of the building, out of the Hart building, and I ran into LaRouche's group uh, out there who I, I saw here locally in New York uh, earlier, earlier today. They were talking about H.R. 1489, uh, and I wanted to get your take on H.R. 40, 1489 and also... That's the one to bring uh, back the Glass-Steagall, right? Right. Yeah, um, so, so I, I, there's a few representatives from around the nation uh, that have signed on. I haven't seen Representative Paul's name on here. Uh, I know you'll have him back on in a few weeks, so maybe you could ask him about that when you see him. Well, i got to so tell you, you I've scanned over the legislation. Um, I haven't read the whole thing because it's pretty lengthy. I think getting Glass-Steagall back is good. The problem is Paul won't vote for something if it's not... Uh, constitutional, and it may have some stuff in it. I mean, that, that's a smell test right there. If Ron Paul, uh, he, he's really a poison detector. If he's not endorsing it, it means he's got problems with it. L listen, I, I don't support a lot of the LaRouche solutions. Their analysis is spot on, and I bring them on to be thought-provoking because, you know, we don't, everybody we have on we don't totally agree with, and, and I think, you know, LaRouche means well. Uh, Tarpley, I don't like to air dirty laundry or open things up, but he was their chief European head, for decades, and Tarpley's super smart, and uh, you know he's got mixed met. He says there's two camps in LaRouche, and you know overall they're bringing out the eugenics, they're bringing out that master plan, and so um, I uh, overall you know, have them on some. Could I uh, just ask you one other quick question? No, go ahead. Yeah, so I have I've really struggled with the idea of getting more involved. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm a priest up here serving a community of about 2,500 or so people. And uh, I just, I, I struggle because I see what's going on around me. I have, I have twin babies, um, and I just, I don't want them growing up in this kind of a world uh, where these wicked people are, are running the show. Uh, do you have any suggestions, you know, how could I strike that balance, especially with, you know, the 5013C status that I, I have to, you know, tiptoe around um you know are there any suggestions that you might have for me that how i could get more involved uh with my current limitations well i think a lot of it is as long as you're not acting like you're talking about something evil people will just think you're talking about news and information and so i would just be confident in everything you discuss and just know you're doing the right thing and realize that you don't really have any limitations the only limitation out there is getting past your fear and, uh, you know, if you get in trouble for telling the truth, well, then that's part of your mission in life. I mean, um, you know that the, you know, the, uh, the, the way to go is not an easy road. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the way that is wide leads to destruction. That doesn't mean I'm on some high horse. In fact, it's part of my wickedness uh, gr growing up that actually, in, in the end, it worked for greater good because, you know, I can recognize evil because... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not a, a fainting violet, you could say. I've seen a few things. I had quite an extreme upbringing. Uh, the things I happen to see in Dallas, it, it's, it's the things I ran into. But I don't want to digress. I appreciate your call, and I'm honored that you would ask my opinion on things. Um